given sermon text will be in 1 Corinthians 4.15. For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers, for in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, I pray for Brother Evan that you would give him strength to speak and, confid and confidence in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Begotten through the gospel. This gospel has given us new life. Where, where a begetting is, there is a new life. And where a new life is, there is a new man. So what this verse is actually saying is saying, I have begotten you through the gospel. It's saying that the gospel is the one who gives us the new man. We're going to see this new birth, of course, is, is necessary. As Jesus is talking in John 3, verses 3 through 6, um, a man is asking him about, about God. He says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into the, his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. This shows again how important the gospel is. Of course, we all know that the gospel is important and that it's the, it's the center of Christianity, but it's the only thing that can give us this new life that can give us this new birth. And this new birth is the only thing that will allow us to see the kingdom of God. First Peter 1, verses 22 through 25 says, Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of the man is the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away, but the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this, and this is the word by which the gospel is preached unto you. This word of God, this gospel, it will never pass away. This is a firm foundation for our new life. Is, is this gospel that will never pass away. When we're born physically, it's, um, it's, we're just born to die, essentially. We're, we're born and everything from there is just downhill. You just, you just go on through your life and then you die. You're always decaying. But in the gospel, in the gospel, the gospel is not of corruptible seed. The gospel is incorruptible. Um, we can stand on this and it will never fall away. We can stand on this and we will never decay. So what has this gospel done in this? We're going to be looking at uh, some of the old man versus the new man here. We're going we're gonna to look at what the new man has done for us. And, um, and we're going to see what the gospel has done. As we look through each of, these, uh, each of these things, remember that the gospel is the one who's done this for us because the gospel is the one who's given us the new man. So first off, it changes our works. This should be obvious, but just for illustration, I'm going to read in Ephesians 4. It says, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having understanding darkened, darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. So, so it says, it says, first, let's, let's just recap here. Their understanding is darkened. They're alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. They're filled with ignorance. They have blindness in their heart. They're being, they're past feeling. They're lascivious. Uh, they work all uncleanness with greediness. Now let's contrast this to the new man that the gospel has worked in us. If so be that ye have heard him and been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on that new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. The gospel has given us this new man, 
which is created after God in righteousness and true holiness. The old man was not like this at all. The old man was, was, um, was faulted in all the ways that we looked at already. But this new man, he is faultless. Second, this, um, this new man gives us true life. We talked about this a little bit earlier, but uh, in Colossians 2, verses 12 and 13, this is talking about Christ. It says, We are buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins and uncircumcision of your flesh, has he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. So we were dead when we were in the old man. He considered the old man and being dead, he considered those the same thing. But through the new man, through the gospel, he's quickened us. We are made alive through the gospel. And next, Brother Ricky covered a little bit of this uh, in his message a couple minutes ago. It says, uh, the new birth makes it so that we do not sin. We do no sin. 1 John 3, uh, 8 through 10 says, He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whoso doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. But it says, the children of God, he that, who, he that is born of God cannot sin. If you're following the new man fully, you will not sin. This is the, this is the power of the gospel. It's given us this new man which cannot sin. Next, we can triumph over death through the new birth that the gospel has given us. Romans 6, verses 20 through 23. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye in the things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and to the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So like we talked about earlier, the gospel is a firm foundation for this new life to be, um, to be seated on. It cannot pass away, and neither can those who live in the new man that it gives. They will not pass away. The gift of God is eternal life. Of course, we will all physically die, provided that the Lord does not come back. But we aren't talking about physical death. We're talking about spiritual death. We're talking about death in the way that God was when he said, In the day that ye eat thereof, ye shall surely die. We're talking about spiritual death and eternal death that we can escape through the new man that the gospel has given us. Amen. Of course, the most important thing that, um, that the new man does for us is it gives us peace with God. And this is what the gospel does. It gives us peace with God. It's called the gospel of peace. It gives us a new birth so we can have a new man so that we can have peace with God. So we look through all of these and then we look at Romans uh, 1.16. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. All these things are done through the gospel because the gospel is the power of God. So finally, what do we do with this gospel? Do we just sit around in the new man and do nothing? No, of course not. God has given us a work to do. 2 Corinthians 5, verses 17 through 21 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God, which hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespass unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. This is the gospel that he's committed unto us. 
Now then, we are the ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So we saw all these good things that the gospel has given us. Um, it, it makes us not sin. It gives us true life. It changes our works. It gives us triumph over death. It gives us peace with God. How are we not going to share this? How are we not going to share it? God has given us the ministry of reconciliation, or the word of reconciliation. He's given it to us. Why shouldn't we share it so that everyone can have these blessings that it gives us? So we see that the gospel, we are begotten through the gospel. We have the new man through the gospel. And this new man does so many great things for us. Let's, let us thank God for begetting us through the gospel and giving us this new life through it. This is indeed a powerful word that he's given us. Thank you.